Well, good morning, Thrivers. Welcome to another day of Thrive Bible Devotions. Excited again to get into God's Word. I gotta tell you, it is nice. Uh, it gets light out earlier now. It just feels like it all of a sudden changed. And, uh, and we have sunshine in the mornings. Uh, it is such a, I don't know, I love sunshine. I was telling my son yes, that yesterday, he's like, I like the dark better. Um, as, as he's uh, away at college and just, you know, he doesn't like the light that early. Uh, to each their own, I suppose, but give me the light. Um, we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and if you missed the introduction, I encourage you to go back and, and watch that video yesterday. Uh, it was a great video, um, really, where we discussed the, the background of the book. Uh, but today, we're going to start getting into it, more into the nitty-gritty. And so, there's 16 chapters in uh, 1 Corinthians. Uh, it should take us a lot longer than 16 weeks. Um, I mean, 16 days. It's probably going to be about a month, I'd imagine, in the book here. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But um, uh, if you got your Bibles, open up. If you don't have your Bibles, well, listen, because we're going to read it anyway. Uh, but we're looking at verses 4 through 9 today. And um, and so we'll pray, and then we'll read, and we'll, we'll talk about it. Father, we love you. We thank you. We, we just pray today as we get into your word, Lord, that you just speak to us, open up our hearts and eyes uh, to know you more, Lord, to be more like you, uh, and um, and ultimately, Lord, to to do what you have us to do, Lord, to, to live as you'd have us to live. We pray this today in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 4 through 9. Uh, the Bible says, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Man, I, you know, Paul, even as he's just giving an introduction, right? Uh, basically, all that he has said in this book so far is who he was, who's writing the book, um, you know, uh, grace and peace to you. And then he just gives a small introduction and uh, giving him thanks, really, for them. But it's, even in his thanksgiving, it is so filled with um, encouragement, with, with just theological and, and uh, deep ideas and, and thoughts that are just amazing to the Christian life. Um, we look here and he's, he says, I give thanks to my God, right, uh, you know, um, always for you because of what? Because of the grace of God that was given to you in Jesus Christ. I mean, let's just take that first line and break that down, right? He says, I'm giving thanks to you always. Um, first off, Paul's giving thanks. And, and he's just a man of thanksgiving, right? He's constantly giving thanks to God for the, the things he's doing in, in Paul's life and in other Christians' lives. Uh, Paul had the opportunity to go to Corinth, to be there for a year and a half, to, to minister to these people in the gospel, to proclaim the gospel, to see convert after convert after convert, um, you know, including two rulers of the synagogue. I, I mean, it was just an amazing uh, ministry he had there, and he's giving God thanks for that. But then he also gives God thanks for the grace of God that was given to them. So not only is he giving thanks, but giving thanks for the grace of God that has been given to them. Uh, and that grace, right, it's just, it's again, it's the blessings of God it poured out on people. And, and people who don't deserve those things, right? And they're, they're, it's ultimately getting what you don't deserve um, as far as in blessings and that sort of thing. You know, we don't deserve salvation. We don't deserve the Holy Spirit living in us. We don't deserve to be adopted as sons. We don't deserve to be joint heirs with Jesus Christ. We don't deserve to have a church of believers around us to, to encourage and help us. We don't deserve any of that. If you look at yourself and look at how selfish and, 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 and you know, you, you really are, and you realize how sinful you are, you would say, you know, I don't deserve any of that. And Paul says, hey, you know, I give thanks. I'm giving thanks for the grace of God. That is given to you. And then not only is it given to you, though, it's given to you in Christ Jesus. You see what I'm saying? He's just building up one thing after the next after the next. That grace of God is given to us in Christ Jesus. Jesus, Who died for us. Who shed his blood for us. Who has died and rose again for us. Uh, who is living for us and living in us. 
It's incredible uh, when you think about it, and, and it's just mind-blowing. But this is the reality, right, guys? That, that grace has been given to us by God, but it's given to us in Jesus Christ. Man, it's, it's incredible. He goes on, though, uh, in this passage, and it's just, he says here, that was given to you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched. <laughs> we were enriched in every way. I, I mean, it's, think about that. It's just, our lives are just made so much better in every way because of Jesus Christ. In, in, in every way. Um, it says who are rich to him in um, that every you are rich to him in all speech and all knowledge. Uh, I mean, it just goes on more and more, right? Uh, in in all speech and all knowledge, we have been enriched. Uh, the things that we 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 hear, the things that we say, the you know the the the, the spreading of the gospel into our lives, the, the things we learn about God and learn about Jesus Christ just enriches us and. And, and makes us more in love with him and, and more knowledgeable of him and, and more aware of what he is doing in our lives. And then he praises God for the testimony of Christ that was confirmed in them. So now, the testimony of Christ, right? The, the words, hey, I know Jesus. I met Jesus. Jesus saved me. This message of the gospel going forth is confirmed in them. In other words, they believe and, they and as they believe, they receive the Holy Spirit. Who then is who is confirming that gospel inside of them, right? Who then changes them and 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 makes them whole and and, and you know produces gifts in them and gives gifts and those gifts are then activated in the church and, and these are all confirmation of the testimony of Jesus Christ played out in our lives. In other words, um, as as we hear the gospel and receive the gospel, right? The confirmation of that or, or the uh, the um, proof of that is played out in the Spirit of God inside of us, right? And specifically, he mentions here, right, um, that, that even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you were not lacking in any spiritual gifts. Um, and they weren't, the, the Corinthians were not lacking in spiritual gifts. And he's going to talk a bit about spiritual gifts in this book a little bit too, uh, because of, you know, uh, maybe some misunderstandings or the way they was applying in their lives, but... Um, but God is giving is gifted them right, and here's the thing, guys. As God gifts us, we are we are called to use those gifts uh, in the church, and and use those gifts uh, with our brothers and sisters and in the world and making a difference. If you're not using your gifts today, right, the the testament of Jesus Christ isn't really being confirmed in you. The gifts are there, and they're just letting them sit. And as you use those gifts, right, it just shows the proof or the the uh, the evidence of the of Christ living in you, and so we want to be using the gifts. And he says these things are being done in you as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus. And that and that really, guys, we wait. We wait for Jesus Christ to come back, right? We're we're waiting for uh, him to come back in the end. And it says, and, and then he will sustain you until the end. Uh, in other words, he is he is holding you up, and he is he is you know. Uh, a lot, you know, not letting you, not letting you go astray, not letting you wander away. He is holding you and keeping you, and 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 guiding and directing you. Uh, your salvation is secure in Him. Uh, you know, so you, He's sustaining you until the end, and then where you will be found guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. And guys, this is so important, right? Because. We're still going to mess up. We're still going to live for ourselves at times, um, sometimes more than others, right? We're still going to be making stupid decisions and, 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 and living in the flesh and, and not always listening to the Spirit and submitting to the Spirit. And, and you know, so we're going to mess up and we're going to do things we ought not do and we're going to have consequences we have to pay for in those things. But here's the thing. Jesus Christ is sustaining us, right? He's keeping us uh, until the day of Jesus Christ. He is He is holding us, right? No one can separate us from the love of God uh, in Christ Jesus. He is He is making sure it's you, you're there, there. And then, so when that time does come, right? When we are brought to heaven, when 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 the end is there, we will be found guiltless, right? We will be found guilt. There'll be no guilt in us because they'll, God will see the blood of Jesus Christ. And if that doesn't get you excited, if that doesn't get you wanting to give thanks, as Paul's giving thanks here, I don't know what does. I mean, man, again, so much incredible, deep thoughts and, and truths in here. And Paul's just giving thanks, right? He's just giving thanks. 
I thank God for the grace given to you in Christ Jesus. I'm grateful that you are enriched in him in all speech and knowledge. I'm grateful that the testimony of Christ is being um, confirmed in you, right? And so that you're, not, not, you're not lacking any gift. Uh, and then while we're waiting for Jesus Christ to return, um, he's, Jesus Christ is sustaining you. He is keeping you there. And he is uh, so that you will be found guiltless in the day of Jesus Christ. Holy mackerel, that's a lot. And he just says it like it's nothing. Because these are the truths that are so ingrained in Paul. And he wants these same truths ingrained in us. This is something we ought to be thinking about and, and, and meditating on and, and going over in our lives over and over and over and over again, right? Oh, man. It's when we think on these things, how do we not have peace in our lives? How do we not have the joy of Christ in our lives when, we, when, we, when we're meditating and we're thinking on these things? It is so vital to the Christian life. He ends this section by saying, God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son. Even there, right? Yeah, this is, even there, he says, God is faithful. And that may not be a, a big, um, you know, revelation. Oh, really? God's faithful? Uh, of course, because we believe that. We should believe that. We, it's evidenced in our life. But listen to this. He, God is faithful, by whom you were called into fellowship fellowship with Jesus. In other words, God, when you, when he, when you accept Christ as your Savior, he says, all right, great. Uh, and because of that, I'm bringing you into fellowship with Jesus Christ. You guys are in, in, in this close-knit, um, you know, f more than a friendship, it is a fellowship. It, it, you know, this being together and, 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 and doing this thing together. And uh, Fellowship isn't just hanging out, right, a lot of time. We're going to have a fellowship time where we hang out. No, fellowship is so much more than that. It is that really personal um, living together idea, right? Uh, you know, loving and caring for one another, um, you know, knowing each other, uh, holding each other accountable, um, you know, encouraging one another, building one another up, praying for one another. And God said, hey, God is faithful. By the way, whom he, who he, where he, I'm sorry, by whom you were called into fellowship with Jesus Christ. I mean, mind blowing. And this whole section is that way. I encourage you guys, man. You know what? You really ought to, you ought to take this passage here, right? Verses 4 through 9. And you ought to just spend one day every week, one day a week for a week. One day you're going to say, okay, um, I'm gonna, today I'm going to spend thinking about the grace of God that was given to me in Jesus Christ. Tomorrow, right? You're going to think, okay, I'm going to think about how he's enriched me, um, you know, in, in all ways. And then in speech and knowledge. The next day, hey, I'm going to spend time thinking about how the testimony of Christ um, is being confirmed in me. How how that plays out, as, how the evidence of Jesus Christ in me is being revealed or, or evidence to the world. Um, man, I, I'm going to spend a day, th then the next day, I think, oh, I'm going to spend a day thinking about the, how I'm not lacking in any gift or we're not lacking in any gifts. How God has gifted me uh, for the ministry. Um, you think that the next day you think, okay, I'm going to think now. Think about it. this is a lot of things to think about and to dwell on. I'm going to think about how um, Jesus Christ is coming back and he's going to sustain me until the end. And the next day, how am going to spend a time? And this is, we're about a week here, guys, already, right? Um, and every day of the week, thinking of just one of these items and meditating on it throughout the day. Uh, I'm going to spend another day thinking about how I'm going to be found guiltless in the day of Jesus Christ. You know, you think about that and how about how God is faithful. And lastly, how we were called into fellowship with Jesus. Man, each one of those things deserves our attention, deserves our meditation, deserves to be you know, molded about in our minds as we contemplate what God has done for us and who he is. Guys, I encourage you to do that. I mean, <clears throat> I'm getting excited now. We've read... We've read nine verses now in the book of Corinthians, uh, in 1 Corinthians, and I'm excited. I just, uh, all of this just makes me, it gets me, gets me fired up to live for him. Fired up to um, tell Satan, you know what, be gone, get lost, get out of here. <clears throat> it fires me up to want to get into my Bible again and to pray. And I hope and I pray that it's firing you up as well. Uh, man, tomorrow, guys, we're going to look a little more in. Um, Paul's going to start addressing the first issue, right? Having to do with divisions in the church. 
And um, uh, it's it's an interesting passage, so I can't wait to look at that tomorrow. But God bless you guys. Uh, we'll see you then. Um, and, uh, yeah, have a good one.